Let's talk about some Major League Baseball players. As you can tell from the title of today's video, we are going to be doing part two of the overrated, underrated MLB player series. The first video I did of this did amazing. 90,000 views, 2,000 likes. The support was unbelievable. So I was like, hmm, let's do another one of these. It's been a few weeks. Let's do another overrated, underrated players video. And that's exactly what we're doing today. Shout out to the boy Python who made this version two of the overrated, underrated players. Couldn't do this video without him. So big shout out to him. And it's very simple. We have five categories going from overrated all the way down to underrated. And then there's some in between and there's also a properly rated. So I'm just gonna see the players that he has on here and tell you where they belong in my opinion. As always, if you guys do enjoy these videos, you know what to do, leave a like on it. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, this is the place to be. Make sure to hit that sub button. Remember to get in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be quite angry with where I put some players. So let me know if you agree or disagree with my thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. And as always, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Giraffe neck mark links in the description now it's time to ruffle some feathers so the first player we have on here is Aaron Nola and I want to just drop him in the slightly overrated category he had a great 2018 almost a Cy Young award winner but a lot of people expected him to bring that into the 2019 season and continue to be a top pitcher in the game and he hasn't done that in 2019 he's definitely been a little bit off the reason I put him in slightly overrated and not completely overrated is because I do think he's actually a good pitcher he just doesn't have the numbers to back it up this year which is why he goes in slightly overrated so Philly fans oh I got you going from the start I'm sure you're happy about that one and by happy I mean you're gonna roast me in the comment section and say I know nothing about baseball as Drupal Cabrera uh interesting player on here former Met but I'd say he's properly rated I don't think anybody's really talking about him I quickly look through a lot of these names there's a few on here where I go don't necessarily know why they're on here they're not a big player but we'll just glance over them quickly and I'll still give you my thought and opinion but as Drupal properly rated Sean Doolittle I'm actually gonna say is slightly underrated he's actually a really good closer and while his numbers this year aren't as good as they've been in the past I think he's underrated because people say that Nationals bullpen is horrendous so I think that they assume that he's also having a bad year which he really isn't he's a good closer his numbers aren't as good as they should be but he's still having a decent year so I think he's actually slightly underrated. JD Davis. I'm going to put him in the slightly overrated category because Mets fans are probably overrating him a little bit, myself included. I really like JD Davis at the plate. I think he's a good hitter. I've loved him in the Mets lineup this year. And I think that Mets fans, like I said, including myself, have probably said he's a better player than he truly is. So I have to put him in slightly overrated. I still think he's a good player, but he can't field. And we definitely want him in the lineup every day. And I just don't know if he's really that good. Jose Altuve. I think Jose Altuve is properly rated. He's won an MVP. Pretty much everyone in the league knows he's a very good player. Nobody's saying he's one of the top five, and I don't think anybody's saying he's not good at all. So I think properly rated is where he belongs. Jose Altuve is a beast. Everyone knows it. Dustin Pedroia is an interesting player. He really hasn't played the last couple seasons because of injuries, and when he has been healthy, his numbers may not be at that MVP type level he once had, but he's still hitting right around 300. He still has an OPS plus above 100. I think Dustin Pedroia is probably properly rated. I don't think anybody is calling him, again, one of the best second basemen in baseball, and if anything, maybe slightly underrated because I think people are saying he's washed, but that's really just due to injury. I don't know. It's a weird scenario because he might not ever play in the majors again. And if he does, he probably won't be a very good player. So it's a tough, tough call, but I'm gonna put him in properly rated. Giovanni Urshela. Yep. We're dropping him in the overrated category. There's Yankee fans and I'm not saying all of them, but there's a lot of Yankee fans who think that he is the answer at third base, that he is going to be the future third baseman for the Yankees for years to come. I just don't understand how you could think that. Yes, he's playing well to start the season, but look at his prior numbers. Look at the type of player he is. He's not going to be hitting 300. He's not going to be an all-star caliber level player all year. And also Yankee fans love to tell you how good he is defensively at third base, but he's really not as good as they say. I mean, they put him in the conversation with Arenado, Chapman, and Machado, and that's just asinine. So I think he's definitely overrated. Chris Paddock. I'm going to drop Chris Paddock in the slightly underrated category. And the reason being is that I don't think he's known yet nationally by a lot of people. I think the hardcore baseball fans like you and me, people watching this video and of course me making it we know who Chris Paddock is but I think if you ask the casual baseball fan they might go yeah he's that rookie pitcher in San Diego but they don't really understand how good he truly is G-Man Choi uh properly rated he's a bit of a meme I understand that but no one's saying he's great no one's saying he's bad and if you are saying he's great it's really for the meme so I think properly rated and he's not on that Williams Acidio meme level just yet Clayton Kershaw I can't believe I'm gonna drop him here but slightly underrated there are people around baseball not necessarily executives, but more so the fans, the community saying that Clayton Kershaw is washed. He's done. It's over for him. I don't know how you could possibly believe that. Have you watched Clayton Kershaw pitch? He may not be the absolute dominant pitcher that he once was, but he is still a very, 
very good pitcher in baseball. So for the sheer fact that people are saying that he's washed, I think he's underrated, which is crazy. Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber is a player that goes in the overrated category for me. Cubs fans, a lot of Cubs fans will like to tell you that he's still this great player. We heard about all the hype when he came up in 2015. He was hitting home runs, but he just hasn't been that kind of player. His average is down. He doesn't get extra base hits. They think that he's this big trade piece that they could send, but he has no position. So I don't really know what his value is. I think he's pretty overrated. Wilson Ramos. I think Wilson Ramos is properly rated. We're going to drag him right up in there. People know him as a good hitting catcher and a bad defensive catcher. And that's pretty much exactly what he is. He hits well, doesn't do well behind the plate. So I think he's properly rated. Corey Kluber, I think as well is properly rated. He's known as one of the better pitchers in baseball this year. He is hurt, so you won't be hearing a lot of his name, but when he is on the mound, he's still very good. So I think properly rated. I don't think he's overrated. I don't think he's washed just yet. I'm also going to drag Daniel Murphy of the Colorado Rockies into the properly rated category here. And the reason being, if you told me like three or four years ago when he was on the Mets or maybe starting up with the Nationals, he'd definitely be in the underrated category. But now he's had those years with the Nationals underneath his belt. Everyone knows what kind of player is he just absolutely mashes at the plate so I think he's properly rated this Evan Longoria one is a bit weird because if you asked me a couple years ago he probably goes in the overrated but I think everyone understands that he's not nearly the player that he once was he's a shell of the player he was in Tampa Bay so I think he goes in properly rated which doesn't mean he's good I think just everyone knows that he's not very good anymore Cespedes this is one that's of course close to my heart as a Mets fan I want to put him in underrated because if you hear Mets fans, get rid of him. I don't want to see him anymore. The injury is blah, 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 blah. Yes, he's definitely been a letdown, but I don't think that means he's overrated. While he's been on the field for the Mets, he's been absolutely incredible. He's been super important to that team and he makes them better. <sighs> I really want to put him in slightly underrated. I understand he hasn't been the player that we wanted, but does that make him overrated? Mm, I'm going to put him in slightly underrated. Uh, Brandon Morrow? A guy who hasn't pitched in quite some time. I'm just going to drop him in properly rated. I don't hear anything about him. As well as the next player on here, Alex Claudio. Another player. Who's talking about Alex Claudio? Nobody. He's an MLB The Show meme because he throws submarine and lefty. But otherwise, no one around the league's talking about him. So properly rated for both of those two. Justin Smoke. I think Justin Smoke is another player that's properly rated. Doesn't get a lot of press in Toronto. I don't think anybody's calling him one of the best first basemen in the game. Everyone knows what he is. He's a switching power hitter. That's what he does. Mike Fires. I'm going to drop Mike Fires in slightly overrated. And only because of this, people will bring up the multiple no hitters that he's thrown. And he's really not that good of a pitcher. He just happens to have thrown multiple no hitters. But if you look at his stuff, it's not very good. So I'm going to put him in the overrated category. Not completely, but slightly overrated. For Nick Castellanos, Nick Castellanos is going to go in the slightly underrated category for me. He's a really good hitter. Look at his numbers from the past couple seasons. You'd go, wow. I had no idea he was hitting that well, and I think that kind of builds into the whole slightly underrated factor. Now, defensively, he's got awful. He's atrocious. He doesn't really have a true spot. He's probably more of a corner outfielder like he's playing now, DH or maybe even first baseman, but I think he's slightly underrated. This is a player who I would keep an eye out for during the trade deadline because he might get traded to a team and make a huge impact. His bat is that good. Wilmer Flores, I'm going to drop Wilmer Flores in the overrated category, and it's just surely because of Mets fans. We love him. Wilmer Flores is a legend. I'm happy to say he was overrated because when he was with us on the Mets, he was one of my favorite players that we've ever had. The dude was clutch. He'd get walk-off hits. But when you look at his numbers, they're not nearly as good as how we talk about him. So yes, Wilmer Flores is overrated. But... I still love Wilmer. He's my boy. Lorenzo Kane. I think Lorenzo Kane's properly rated. One of the best defensive center fielders in the game. Now, yes, I don't think he's won a gold glove just yet. And he definitely deserves one, but I think everyone around the league knows he's a good player, so I think he's properly rated. Matt Carpenter. I think Matt Carpenter goes in the slightly overrated category. He goes through some hot and cold spells. He's definitely a streaky hitter. And he had that crazy, like, one or two month stretch last year where he was just absolutely going off with the salsa and everything. So I think people thought that he really is an MVP type player because he was technically in the conversation. But he's not that kind of player. Matt Carpenter gets hot, then he gets cold. And he gets hot, and he gets cold. And he's not off to a great start this year. He has had some sketchy numbers. I think he's a little overrated. Jonathan Lucroy, I don't think anyone's calling him a good catcher in Major League Baseball anymore. I mean, this isn't 2015, 2016, where he was kind of a hot name. So I think he's properly rated. He's not very good. He's not playing well. Everyone kind of knows that. This will probably bother some people, but I think JD Martinez is actually slightly underrated. Now, he's a DH, so it's weird because fielding, no one really cares about. Everyone knows he's bad. But at the plate, I don't think people understand how good of a hitter he is. I mean, he kind of almost won the Triple Crown last year. He's mashing again for the Red Sox this year. JD Martinez might be one of the best pure hitters in all of baseball. And I don't think that when people talk about the best hitters in the game, his name always comes up. So he goes in slightly underrated because while there are a lot of people who understand how good he is, I still think there's a lot who don't. David Price is going to be the first player I put in the underrated category. And here's why. 
Everyone loves to talk about how David Price is not a good player, how he was a flop for the Red Sox, a waste of money. He hasn't been great, blah, 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 blah. But look at his numbers the last few years. He's actually pretty good. His whip with the Red Sox is 1.17. His ERA is 3.7, but it's actually going down because he's pitching well this year. The way David Price gets talked about, you'd think that this dude is out there giving up 10 runs a game, and he's not. So I actually think David Price is somewhat underrated. Tyler Glass now. Tyler Glass now is going to go in the underrated category, plays for the Tampa Bay Rays. So unless you're a big baseball fan, then it's not a big market. You don't know much about them. He's having an amazing year. Now he is on the IL with a forearm strain and it's a 60 day. So not sure if we'll see him again this year. I don't know what the whole story is there. I think if he had a full year of being healthy and showing what kind of damage he can do on the mound, people would actually start to know his name, kind of like Blake Snell. But right now he's hurt. So people are forgetting about him. Therefore, I think he's a little underrated. He's not being talked about He's underrated. Kenley Jansen. I think Kenley Jansen's properly rated, if maybe slightly underrated, again, because people like to say that he is overrated and he's not. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, when people say someone's overrated, but they're actually not, so that kind of makes them underrated. It's a whole complicated scenario. Personally, I think he's properly rated. People know he's a good closer, and he still is a good closer, so properly rated. Starling Marte, I actually think, is another player who's going to be underrated. He's actually pretty good in center field. He can definitely swing the bat for the Pirates. He has some speed. He had a good year last year. I know he's coming off that PED scandal from a couple seasons ago. But Starling Marte is actually a very good player, and I feel like he gets forgotten about because he plays in Pittsburgh, and you get more press for guys like Lorenzo Cain, Mike Trout, all these other outfielders who are really good, of course. But Starling Marte deserves a little more credit than he gets. James Paxton of the Yankees. I think he's properly rated. I think Yankee fans are actually maybe even a little bit hard on James Paxton, kind of expecting a little bit more out of him, but I think he's pretty good. I, it's not a lot to talk about with James Paxton. I think he's properly rated. Andrew Miller is going to go in the slightly overrated category. Last year, not a great season. This year, he's finally starting to pitch a little bit better, but off to a rough start. The years before that, he was absolutely lights out. I mean, no one could hit him. So for those reasons, he's probably overrated because I think people still think he's absolutely lights out like he has no troubles. He's not that kind of pitcher anymore, but he's not as bad as I feel like people treat him. Kevin Ploiecki? Yeah properly rated. I mean, no one's saying Kevin Ploiecki is good, so interesting guy to have on here. I think you put that on there because you know I'm a Mets fan and I didn't like him, but I think he's properly rated. I mean, no one thinks he's good and he's not, so there you go. Chris Sale. I think Chris Sale's properly rated, considered one of the best pitchers in the league, and he definitely is one of the best pitchers in the league, so there's really not much to say here. I know he had a rough start to the year, but he's starting to figure it out more, and he's clearly good, and that's what people say he is, so properly rated. Matt Harvey? Ah... Uh... Probably properly rated as well. Again, no one thinks he's good anymore. So if you asked me last year, probably overrated. If you asked me the year before, probably overrated. But right now, I think everyone's understood that the Dark Knight is no more. Matt Harvey has lost all his power. He's terrible properly rated. Cole Hamels. I'm going to drop Cole Hamels in the slightly underrated category. He's not getting a lot of talk as being one of the better pitchers in the National League. And while I don't think he's a top one, since coming to the Chicago Cubs, his ERA has been under three. And if you're a pitcher who has an ERA under three, that's really good. So I think he's actually slightly underrated, just not getting enough talk about being one of the best pitchers, if not the best pitcher on the Cubs staff, maybe behind Kyle Hendricks. You Darvish. I think you Darvish is going to go in the overrated category. He melted down in the World Series with the Dodgers a couple years ago. He really hasn't been a good pitcher with the Cubs. And I think Cubs fans know that he's not that good, but they're still kind of hoping that he can come back. I think you Darvish is overrated. Johnny Cueto, uh, weird one on here. Again, like he's kind of towards the end of his career and no one's really calling him a top pitcher anymore. So properly rated. He hasn't pitched since the end of July last season. It's not much to talk about with him. Jesus Aguilar is a weird player because he went off last year and I think people expect him to do well and he's been garbage. So I'll put him in the slightly overrated category. I don't think anyone thinks he's a top first baseman in the game, but he's definitely been a disappointment and I think people expected better of him. So we'll give him a little slightly overrated. Francisco Cervelli. I don't think anyone rates him at all. I think he's Francisco Cervelli. He catches for the Pirates. That's pretty much what it is. So properly rated for him. Not much to talk about there. Ignore Aaron Hicks's numbers this year because he is coming back from an injury. I think it was what on his back. So he's going to take some time to get back in the swing of things. But I think Aaron Hicks is actually a really good player. I think Yankee fans definitely talk about him a lot. And I think he is important to that team. So I'm actually going to drop him the slightly underrated. If Yankee fans didn't talk about him so much, like if they didn't think he was good, he'd be in the underrated. But there's a lot of Yankee fans. They think he's good. He actually is good. I just don't think the rest of the league knows that. So slightly underrated. Brandon Nimmo, hate to do this, but I'm going to drop Brandon Nimmo in the slightly overrated category. This year, he has looked like a lost man. I don't know what's going on, but he doesn't look like he knows how to play baseball anymore. Last year, fantastic season. He was a great leadoff man. He was, of course, hot during that stretch where he just went off. And I think he is an important player to the Mets, but not necessarily as important as a lot of people have him. Like some people kind of consider Nimmo as like untouchable. I don't think he's that level yet. Like I think Conforto is way better than him. So I think he's slightly overrated. Adam Eaton. Adam Eaton's going to go in the slightly underrated category. Now, his numbers for average aren't as good as they used to be. Like he's not 
a 300 guy right now. He's like 275. But he's kind of like this scrappy little player that helps out a team. Like one of those guys you need. He'll slap the ball to left field, do a hit and run. He'll steal a base here and there. He's going to play hard for you. He's one of the guys that you want on your team if you have a complete lineup. So I call him slightly underrated because I just don't think anyone talks about Adam Eaton. And he deserves a little bit of conversation. Marwin Gonzalez, I'm going to drop in the slightly overrated category. After that monster 2017 season with the Astros, I feel like he kind of got talked up quite a bit as one of the more underrated players in the game and thus being called so underrated. He hasn't really had those numbers like he's had since 2017. So the underrated category kind of got flipped here because now he's being overrated by how underrated he's being called. Again, one of those weird players who his numbers really haven't changed, but he's just been considered too high. Our oldest Chapman? Yeah, you're seeing this correctly. I'm gonna drop him underrated. He has been disgusting this year. He's been disgusting pretty much his entire career as a Yankee. And yet I still hear some people who are like, ah, Chapman's not that good anymore. Ah, he's kind of washed. And I'm like, are you watching baseball? Do, do you see this guy when he steps on the mound? He's absolutely disgusting. So yeah, I think our oldest Chapman's underrated. It's unbelievable, but I think that's the case. Ian Kinsler, I'm going to drop in the slightly overrated category. I think a lot of people thought this was going to be a good signing for the Padres in the offseason, that he'd be a good veteran presence. He'd be able to still swing the bat a little bit, and he's just been absolutely horrible for the Padres. So Kinsler's slightly overrated. He's definitely washed at that point. Brandon Belt, I'm going to drop Brandon Belt in the properly rated, I think. I think Brandon Belt is considered a decent first baseman, and I think that's pretty much what he is. Yes, I think his numbers would be better if he was out of San Francisco playing 81 games a year there, but I still don't think he's a top first baseman in the game, so I wouldn't say he's underrated and I wouldn't say he's overrated. He's Brandon Bell. Josh Harrison, I'm going to go ahead and say in the overrated category, this is a guy who maybe it's just me overrating him. I don't know about you guys, but I thought he was going to be a really good pickup for a team. And I was shocked that the Tigers were the ones that got him. He's scrappy, hits for a good average, can play a lot of different positions. Well, he's one of those guys you want on your team. But he's been horrible for the Tigers this year, and you can see why nobody wanted him. Rugnet Odor? Rugnet Odor also goes in the overrated category. Uh, just kind of been a huge letdown. He had that huge year, and then he signed that contract, but he has not been a very good player since then. Another one of these guys who's extremely streaky, hot and cold, and he's just been extremely cold this year. Nick Ahmed? Properly rated, he's a good fielder. I don't think anyone's calling him one of the top shortstoppers in the game, so uh, properly rated for me, not much to talk about there. Brandon Crawford, drop him right in the overrated category. There's a lot of Giants fans who like to tell you he's still the best defensive shortstop in the game. He's still a top shortstop in the game, and I go... Are you sure about that? Did you hit your head this morning? Because Crawford has definitely regressed defensively. He's on the decline. Offensively, oof, has not looked good at all. I just don't know how you can think Brandon Crawford's even a top 10 shortstop in the game. He's not good anymore. Tim Beckham, uh, properly rated. No, let's talk about Tim Beckham. Jan Gomes, properly rated as well. He's good defensively. Offensively, he's, eh, he's all right. Properly rated. Again, not a lot of people talking about him. Fran Mil Reyes is going to go in the underrated category for me. You've got Tatis Jr. He gets all the talk there. You got Manny Machado, a big name guy. You've got Hosmer as well. Not a lot of people talk about Fran Mil Reyes who is just hitting absolute nukes. The dude is an elite home run hitter. He's an absolute beast. He may not have the greatest average, may not have the best on base percentage, but the guy has an over 800 slugging percentage. That's elite kind of stuff. And when you talk about some of the best home run hitters in the league, I don't think his name gets brought up and it really should. Framil Reyes is, whew, he can hit a baseball. Jerry's Familia. Jerry's Familia is going to go in the overrated category. Uh, he was brought in this season for the Mets to be that eighth inning guy. He was great with us in the past. And he's just been bad. He's just been really bad. So overrated for me. People thought that he was going to be great as a setup man, and he just hasn't been at all. We got Chuck Nasty, Charlie Blackman, the extra base hit machine out in Colorado. Now, would his numbers be as good in Colorado as they are in another place? Probably not. That's probably the perfect ballpark for him, but that's where he plays. And I think people kind of considered last year to be like, ah, he's on the decline. He's kind of regressing a bit, but his numbers are really good again this year. He should actually arguably be an all-star in 2019. So I think Charlie Blackman's actually slightly underrated. Jesse Winker, I know there's the whole Mets thing with him. He waved goodbye. I mean, it didn't bother me at all. I thought it was pretty funny. You know, Mets fans were giving him crap, but properly rated. I don't think anyone thinks Jesse Winker's great and he's kind of average. So properly rated. Albert Pujols is probably slightly overrated at this point. The reason being is that he's considered as one of the best of all time, which is not wrong at all. I mean, he's one of the goats. But right now, you're not seeing Albert Pujols at his best. He's a shell of the player he once was. And I think people will still go to games and be like, oh, I get to see Albert Pujols play when you really shouldn't care about watching him play anymore because he's not very good. So I think he's slightly overrated right now, not for his career. Matt Chapman, I think he's slightly underrated. At the beginning of the year, he would have gotten fully underrated, but I think people are starting to come around to the Matt Chapman hype train and starting to understand that he is 
arguably one of the best defensive third basemen in the game. He can also swing the bat. He's a really good player, Matt Chapman. So I still think he's a little underrated, but people are starting to figure it out now and know the name and know that he's a guy to watch out for. He's good. And then Jay Bruce, I'm going to put in the slightly overrated just because I think Philly fans, it's granted they're, you know, riding the wave right now of how well he's playing, but I think Philly fans think he's actually going to be really good for them this year. And just, just wait and see. It's Jay Bruce. I saw him the last couple seasons with the Mets. He's going to get hurt. He's going to cool off. He'll continue to hit home runs. That's something he'll always do, but he's not going to be the player that he's showing right now. He's not that good. And that's going to be my choices for the overrated, underrated part two on this channel. I would love to know what you guys think about it down in the comment section below. So share with me your opinions, your thoughts. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Remember, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, this is the place to be. So make sure you hit that sub button. We've got a couple bangers coming out this weekend. I promise. I said it last weekend and then uh, I didn't upload any, but this weekend it's coming. Don't worry. Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video right here, as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time tomorrow. Bangers. Bye.